Test one, test two. Test one, test two. That's good. One of these days, I'm going to strike out on something. <laughs>
the Lord. That's, that's, the, that's the hymns. Call me Jesus. The praise to to you. Praise 
from the rising of the sun. From the rising of the sun unto the going down. The same. He's worthy. Come on. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's worthy to be praised. Oh, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus. Jesus. Blessed Savior. He's worthy to be praised. Listen. God is my rock. My rock unto salvation. A strong, strong deliverer. In him always trust. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus. Jesus. Blessed Savior. He's worthy to. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to. To be praised. He's so worthy. He's so worthy. He's so worthy. He's so worthy. Come on. He's so worthy. He's so worthy. He's so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. is coming from the 100th song we will recite it responsibly make a joyful noise to the Lord all ye lands know ye that the Lord he is God it is he that hath made us and not we ourselves we are his people and the sheep of his pasture For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Let us recite our mission and vision statement. To introduce, present to all people, Jesus Christ, through our empowering ministries, by equipping the membership through the effective teaching and preaching of the word to the glory of God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning with grateful hearts, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the many blessings you have bestowed on us. We thank you, Lord, that you brought us through another week, another day, Lord. You are worthy to be praised Amen. from the rising of the sun yes. until the going down of same. We thank you, Lord, for your grace, your love. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We are so glad, Lord, to be in your house this morning. We thank you and praise you. We glorify your holy name. We lift you up. There are not words enough that we can utter to show our love and devotion. Dear God, come into this service, dear Heavenly Father. Take charge. Strengthen the preacher who is to bring the word today. 
comfort the congregation. Help them to cast aside every weight, every burden, and to just focus on you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We lift you up, Lord. And we offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Please remain standing for this morning's congregational hymn, which is just a little talk with Jesus.
little talk with Jesus makes it real. your hands together. If you ever had a talk with him and you know he came in to see about you and made the situation all right, well come on and magnify him. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Is there anybody grateful to be in the house of the Lord just one more time? Is there anybody that got a, a spirit of joy to be in the house of God one more time? Somebody at Roses ain't at the house of God. Somebody at the hospital wish that they could be at the house of the Lord this morning. Somebody at home wish that they could be in the house of God, but you're here and you're watching this morning, so you might as well, we might as well glorify him, we yeah. might as well magnify him, we might as well lift him up. Is there anybody here that wants to lift him up? Lift him up, lift him up, lift him up with my hallelujah, lift him up with my thank you, Jesus, lift him up. And I know it's all right. <laughs> I know it's all right. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, First Baptist. How many are glad to be in the house of the Lord just one more time? Come on and give God a hand of praise. This will serve as our weekly announcements. As you know, um, to, we yesterday started our early voting process. Amen? Amen. Um, now, I'm going to say this. If back in March... In April and May and June, how many remember how long those lines for Walmart, Target, Family Dollar, the dollar store? Because you had to go buy toilet paper and mouthwash. And how long did we stand in those lines? Long time to buy your toilet paper and your toothpaste. Yes. And trying to buy some chicken to bring home because you had to go to ShopRite. Yes. Don't let the line that you see today deter you from standing in line to cast your vote. Because just like you needed toilet paper, you need to vote. Just like you needed toothpaste, you need to vote. Just like you needed that chicken to bring home, you need to go and vote. And your vote is your what? Your voice. Because it, there may be the electoral college for the presidential election, but there's local elections that need to take place to this year. Amen. Some senators, some congressmen that need to be replaced this year. Yeah. And that's how you control the presidency. Yeah. Not just by voting for the president and thinking that's it for four years, I'll come back later, but voting during this year and voting through midterm and voting for local, uh, to change local laws, you have to vote in those, ju ju those uh, uh, judges that are running. Yeah. If you want to see fair treatment to black and brown, you got to vote in to help vote in those judges on the on the on the circuit courts. So your vote matters today. From yesterday until uh, November third, your vote matters. Today we are um, we'll be uh, organizing the souls to the poll. Once we have ended our uh, worship uh, service here, and we give the benediction, you giving your tithe and your offering, uh, go to your car. Start your car up. A set of turning to the right to go to Popeye's. <laughs> Turn to the left and meet us at the Islip Annex. Voting this morning uh, started at 10 a.m. to 3. But once you're online, they're not turning people away that, are on, or that were online before 3 o'clock. It may take a little while. We may miss the Jets playing today, yes. which... It's not a bad thing right about now. <laughs> you may miss the Giants play this morning. Ain't a bad idea this today. But get out and cast your vote. If you can't go today, which is understandable, some of us have things that we've already had pre-planned for today. Go tomorrow. You have an opportunity from this Saturday to Sunday the 1st to go and cast your vote. But like I said, don't let a long line or somebody's bad voice deter you from casting your vote. Because every vote matters. Amen? Amen. 
Huh? I'm sorry? Yes, and go prepared. Stop at 7-Eleven, get a little snack. <laughs> go to the, you know, if you got, go to the bathroom before you go. <laughs> Bring your folding chair. Thank you. Do what you have to do. Because our forefathers and our foremothers, some of your mothers and fathers, walked and endured uh, water hoses and dogs being attacked on them and being bullied and beaten, crosses burning on the front yard because all they did was stand up to their, for their right to vote. And to change what's going on in our country right now, yes. we need to vote. Amen. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for, but I'll tell you who not to vote for. <laughs> He's orange. He was on the left side of your TV on, on Thursday night. <laughs> um, but jokes aside, go and cast your vote. If you can't do it this week, can't do it today, do it sometime this week. If you can't do it sometime this week, then make sure that you, have, or that you prepare uh, to vote on November 3rd. Find out where your local polling place is. If you don't know, you can go uh, to, the state, uh, to the state webpage, and they'll tell you, put in your address, and they'll tell you where your, vo your local uh, polling place is. Um, but go out and cast your vote. Um, also, the Connecticut Creek Restoration. Um, the next uh, date is Saturday, November 7th. Pastor has already asked but he, um, last Sunday, but I will reiterate it this Sunday. Ask for some more First Baptists to come on out to, su to support. Amen? So if we can please come on out on Saturday, November 7th. The time is from 9 a.m. to noon. Um, and the information is there in um, both of the, uh, the Suffolk County early voting and the Connecticut Creek restoration information is in your um, is in the back vest in both vestibules. Also, next Sunday, the first Sunday of November, this year is moving swiftly. Um, we will be having free flu shots. Amen. All right. Amen. I've already got mine for free. But well, if you have not. Uh, we ask that you please uh, join us from a 1 to 2, I mean 11 to 2, uh, next Sunday. Uh, invite your friends, tell people about it that uh, have not gotten their flu shot. Um, many doctors are saying that the best way to help, uh, not to cure, but to help with the coronavirus is to get your flu shot. Um, so this way that you um, can help fight that off or, you know. Um, so we ask that you please do that next Sunday. And they are free, Amen. Doesn't have to go. You don't have to pay a copay like you would if you have to go to your doctor. You don't have to show your insurance card where your insurance may or may not cover it. This is absolutely, positively free. Amen. Amen. I like free. Hallelujah. Um, so we ask that you please uh, today, after the benediction, to join us um, as we go to so as we venture down to for souls to the polls um, at the Islip Town Annex, um, and also join us next uh, Saturday, November seventh. Um, for our Penetra Creek restoration. This time, I'm going to have um, Elder Bell come with our uh, morning prayer. I mean, our morning, uh, morning with our morning prayer and our scripture reading. All praise be to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit this morning. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, O God, our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all that is evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. How excellent is thy name, O oh God. We don't have to go far to just know how to pray. We could be on our knees, we could be standing, we could be in the car, we could be in the kitchen, we could be anywhere. You are always close by. So we offer up this prayer today, O oh God, for all of those who are in need. And we all are probably in need for one thing or the other. 
But your word said that you would supply every one of our needs. And there are so many needs, oh God, that we know of. But I know that you know all, so you know all the needs of those, oh God, that may be right here in the congregation. Those that are listening and seeing on live stream. We lift up those, oh God, who are ailing in their body right now. They may not be in the hospital, but they're ailing in their body. We lift them up to you, God. And those that are in the hospital, we know, oh God, that you are an omnipresent God. You are everywhere. So we thank you, God, that your spirit will reign in every one of the hospital rooms. For you know every person in every room. Those that are there because of the virus. Those that are there because of other diseases. Those that are there, oh God, with broken limbs. We know, oh God, that you are our healer. And we rely and depend on you because you never go back on your word. You said, oh God, that you were the healer. So we lean and depend and trust you. Those, oh God, that are in nursing homes. Oh God, those that are in nursing homes. Being cared for, oh God. Maybe they're without a family member that cannot visit. Oh we God, we thank you that you can be their friend. That you are as near as saying, Lord, Lord, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. So we lift up every one, oh God, in all the nursing homes in the name of Jesus. Those that are in rehab centers, recovering before they can go home. We thank you, God, that there is a place that they can go to recover. And as we lift them up, we lift up those that are caring for them keeping them free, keeping them strong of the virus that's still lurking and still running rampant. Oh God, we have to lean and depend on you. Oh God, those that are on our sick list, those that are home, oh God, can't being cared for by caregivers, we lift them up to you in the name of Jesus. We know, oh God, you are in every home, everywhere, on the street, in the cars. You are everywhere. So we thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord, that you were able. We know that you are able because you woke us up this morning. We know that you are able, oh God. That when we went to sleep last night, that we were protected. That the property in which we live on was protected by the guards, oh God. That your angels were hovering over our bedside, keeping us from all hurt, harm, and danger. So when we woke up, oh God, we knew where we were. We could put our feet on the floor. Thank you, Jesus. We could lift our hands and say, thank you for waking me up another day. That we could see you. We could feel you. In the name of Jesus. For every limb in our bodies, oh God. That are functioning as you designed them to function. Every system. Every cell. Every artery. Every vein. In the name of Jesus. Our digestive system is working. Oh, glory to God. Our immune system is working. Our lymph system is working. And if it's not working, we know you have a cure. Because you designed it in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we lift up all the bereaved families today. Those, oh God, that are going through the process. You said, 
oh God, you would not go without leaving us a comforter. So we know that you're there on the low moments to comfort and bring peace to their spirit. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you for this moment in time. For nothing is promised. We lift up this state, this town, this village, this hamlet. We lift up this country in the name of Jesus. We lift up all those that are in charge that, oh God, that have been given authority. But we know you are the higher authority. And we know your will will be done. So we thank you, God. As we offer this prayer, we all know, we know, we know, we know, oh God, that you never leave us or forsake us. And all the prayers that have gone up for this nation and the world, we know you have it in your hand. So in the name of Jesus, we believe that we receive that which is asked according to your word, according to your word. In Jesus' mighty name, and the people of God all say, praise. Amen. We Amen. give you the praise. Amen. Amen. Oh, Amen. How, hallelujah. You, Jesus. Glory to you. Hallelujah. We give you the praise 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 thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord hallelujah thank you lord thank you lord glory to you hallelujah we give you the praise. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to you. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to you. Hallelujah. We give you the praise. Amen. Hallelujah. We give you the praise and we do give you the praise, Lord. We have a couple of announcements. Um, our elder, Xavier, will come forth and then uh, Deacon Jones. Amen. Just one more announcement. Um, on this Thursday, BTU will resume. Amen. Um, so for all of those that are part of our BTU online class, uh, we will be resuming this Thursday. Amen. Amen. And then at this time, our chairman of our deacon board, Deacon Jones, has a further announcement. Good morning, church. To all of you who are gathered here in our sanctuary and to all of you listening on live stream this morning, we've come to remind you that this is the month of October and there's something happening that's very important other than Halloween. Now, I know a lot of you are looking forward to that, but we have a very, very important announcement for you. And I don't know if most of you know, but how uh, October is Pastor's Appreciation Month. The whole month of October is Pastor's Appreciation. Now I know we've come to you a little late, but it's still a month that we can remember our pastor. We only got a couple of, uh, a week, was about a week, I think, left. Uh, but... We want to show our pastor that we do appreciate him. Now, I know these, uh, uh, these pandemic times have been kind of rough on most of you. 
And our pastor himself has said that he would give up his anniversary this year because he understands that so many people are struggling. And we know that to be true. But it's not too much out of, I don't think it's too much of a burden to go out and just to buy a card, just to buy a card that says, Pastor, I appreciate you. And if possible, those of you that can, put something tangible inside of that card and say, Pastor, we appreciate you. Let him know that he's been here all this time and we have not forgotten what he's done or what he's doing. And we thank you, Pastor, for giving your everything. So let's, if we can, show our pastor throughout the rest of this month that's left, try to show him that we appreciate him. You can bring those cards on next Sunday, and you don't have to even wait uh, or forget it just because October is gone. But next month, you can still give it to him and still let him know that this is uh, a time that we appreciate you. So think about this to all of you uh, 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 here this morning. Let, let our pastor know in some way that we appreciate him. God bless. Amen. Our scripture reading today for our sermonic uh, scripture is coming from John 3. John 3, verses 1 through 8. John 3, 1 through 8. You have it, say amen. Well, that was a low amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> and it reads as thus, and I'm reading from the NASB version. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born, can he? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows when it wishes and you hear the sound of it but do not know where it comes from and where it is going so is everyone who is born of the spirit amen amen saints I asked the Lord to give me a song for today. Pray with me. This is what he gave me. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. It's my offering. Take me to the king Truth is I'm tired Options are few I'm trying to pray But where are you? 
I'm all church down, hurt and abused. I can't fake what's left to do. Truth is, I'm weak, no strength to fight, no tears to cry. Even if I tried, but still my soul refuses to die. One touch will change my life. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. It's my offering. Lay me at the throne. Leave me there alone to gaze upon your glory and to sing you this song. Take me to the king. Truth is, it's time to stop playing this game. We need a word for the people's pain. So, Lord, speak right now. Let it fall like rain. We're desperate. We're chasing after you. No rules, no religion. I made my decision to run to you, the healer that I need. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in, in pieces. Hallelujah. It's my offering. Leave me at the throne. Leave me there alone. Hallelujah. To gaze upon your glory. And to sing you this song. Take me to the king. Take me to the king. Take me to the king. Hallelujah. I surrender all. I surrender all. To thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Come on, help me say that. I surrender all. Yeah, all, all to thee. Sit, Savior, I surrender. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Hello. Yes, I do. They're all. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. I don't know about you, but I've been going through a little something. My loved ones are going through. They're struggling. It's my offering. Hallelujah. Lay me at the throne. 
leave me there alone to gaze upon your glory uh, and to sing you this song hallelujah take me to the king 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 take me hallelujah to the king yeah take me to the king hallelujah thank you jesus if nobody can fix it i know you can god ah take me to the king Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and praise him. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, you're so worthy. Yes, take me to the king. All that I am, all that I'm not, and all that I've got. That's why I had to sneak in. I surrender all. Glory to God in the highest. No matter what it looks like. God is still on the throne. He's still ruling and reigning in the lives of men. And I am so glad. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Let us pray. Lord God, our dear Heavenly Father, thank you that at this time I can surrender all. At this time, I can empty myself and say, Lord, fill me to be used of you. To be effective, Lord God, by using your word, empowered by you. Lord, that somebody may yield and say, Lord, what must I do to be saved? Thank you. This we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. You've heard the text that was read in your hearing. John chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. Let's look at this. I pull my sermon title from verse 8. And I will be reading the NASB version also. John 3, verse 8. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but do not know where it comes from and where it is going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. The Lord gave me this thought, run like the wind. And I've been meditating on this for a few weeks. I tried to look it up on the internet because you know how this generation is? Oh, there's an app for this, there's an app for that. Daddy, you don't know how to do that? Let me show you. Types up a couple things and it comes on the screen. So I went on my laptop and I looked up run like the wind. And it said that they don't know where the origin of it comes from. 
Most likely, it came from the time of the horse and buggy. The only thing they knew that can run faster than a horse was the wind. So the focus wasn't on how fast, but to complete the task, the end result, complete the task, deliver the goods, cross the finish line in a timely manner. The urgency of the situation deemed run like the wind. Well, I'm looking at this conversation that the Lord Jesus had with Nicodemus. To tell Nicodemus, the wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but you don't know where it comes from, and you don't know where it's going. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So let's look at this conversation first. Now there was a man, verse 1, of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, now let me stop right there. We don't know, the Bible doesn't tell us why he came by night. But the good thing was he came to Jesus. Now I've heard different takes on this, you know, different reasons and all, but I'm not going there. He came to Jesus. And he said, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher. For no one can do these, these signs that you do unless God is with him. Yes, it's, it's, it's interesting because he said, we know that you came from God because nobody can do these miracles. We know that Jesus was going around preaching the gospel to the poor. He was going around healing the sick, opening up blinded eyes, unstopping deaf ears, casting out devils, and people were hearing what he was doing. So the ones that knew the word, Nicodemus and his group, they should have known there's something different about this man. Yes, so Nicodemus was one of the few that came from the Sanhedrin, that came of the Pharisees, that came of the religious leaders to see this man in whom he have heard so much about. He says, no one does this except God be with him. But what he didn't understand is that God was with him. God himself was in his very presence. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. He didn't understand that. But the news got around. Yes. Didn't know that God was with him. And after he said that, Jesus said to him in verse 3, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Jesus didn't waste any time with Nicodemus. You must be born again, Nicodemus. And Nicodemus is not a denomination. It's a condition of the Spirit. Because we've seen it in our lifetime that the born again was, was considered a denomination at one time. But we had to correct that. It's not a denomination. It's not a belief. It's a condition of the spirit. So Jesus wasted no time. He said, Nicodemus, you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus answered, and his, his answer was kind of sarcastic, wasn't it? So Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born again when he is old? He cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born, can he? So Jesus had to correct this quickly. 
Verse 5, Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say unto you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Peter was preaching after Pentecost, and Peter said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is what Jesus was saying, born of water and the Spirit. When you receive me as your Lord and Savior, the Spirit of God comes in, makes your spirit brand new, born again, and then you're baptized, showing the world that there's been an internal change. Yes, so born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Verse six says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the spirit, capital S, is spirit. So that which is born of the sweet Holy Spirit of God we get a brand new born again spirit. That's what I'm telling you, Nicodemus. Verse 7, do not be amazed that I said to you, you must be born again. Don't be amazed. Just receive it. Embrace it that you have to be born again. The wind blows. So he gave Nicodemus an object lesson, the wind. He said, the wind blows, and you don't know where it's coming. And you don't know where it's going. But you can feel the wind. And you can see the effects of the wind. Sometimes it's like a gentle breeze. And other times it can go and become a gale force that will destroy buildings. In other words, Nicodemus, when you are born again, you will be effective for the kingdom of God. When you're born again, you'll make a difference in other lives. When you are born again, you'll be like salt. You'll season the situation you're in, or you'll preserve the way that we should go. Nicodemus, when you're born again, you'll let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your heavenly Father. You will shine in the darkness, the sweet gospel of Jesus Christ. Nicodemus, when you're born again, you'll be moved like the wind. Yes, people will say at first, look what the wind, what? Blew in. But after that, they'll say, I'm so glad you came. I'm so glad you shared the gospel. I'm so glad you highlighted that point because I needed that. Yes, don't be idle, Nicodemus. But be effective because your heavenly father has a business, has a work for you to do. Jesus said at one time, I must be about my father's business. Jesus wasn't idle. He was going to see those that were in need. Yes, while it is day, Jesus says, I must work while it is day because the night cometh when no man can work. I got to run like the wind. Jesus said, let us go into the next town because the town he was preaching in, they said, Jesus, I want you to stay here with us for a while. No, Jesus said, I got to go into the other towns also, spreading the gospel. For this reason, I came. Yes, Jesus even said to Judas, when Judas was going to betray him, Jesus said to him, Judas, do what you're going to do, and do it quickly. Yes, because Jesus knew that time had come. Let me go and do what it is. So look at verse 8 with me again. I want to point out something that's real critical here. Verse 8, the wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but do not know where it comes from or where it's going. But this is, this is the part I want you to look at. So is the preacher. 
So is the deacon. So is the choir. So is the pew. So is the preacher. So is the teacher. It says, so is everyone who is born of the spirit. Yes. Yes. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. The disciples were in Jerusalem and they said, good night to two of the disciples that were going back to Emmaus. Then, so they said goodbye to him. And then the next thing they did, they turned around and those two disciples were right back because they had met Jesus in the way. So here the wind was blowing one direction and blowing in another direction. The next day they knew they were back again and Jesus had met with them. So they ran like the wind to get back to the other disciples to tell them we saw Jesus, the risen Lord. Yes, we can't see God, but we can see the effects of God in each of us. We can see the effects of God on a lost soul that's looking for help. We can see the effects of God in somebody that wants to do of his good will. We have a question, how did you do that? And we respond, it wasn't me, it was he. It was the one that was doing that in my life that I could not do on my own. Jesus said in the Gospel of John, without me, you can do nothing. But with me in your lives, you can accomplish all things. That's what it says in the book of Philippians. I can do through who strengthens me it is god who works in us to do the will of his good pleasure so with 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 that knowledge with that understanding and faith with what the god says to us we can run like the wind that means we can be effective in doing his good will and pleasure we can be in a timely manner to let somebody know that the wages of sin is still death but the gift of god is eternal life through the shed blood of jesus christ we can run like the wind we can be effective in the kingdom we can let this dying world know that there's a god that loves him he loved me so he pulled me out of the muck he pulled me out of the mire and he said now go do what i commissioned you to do oh run like the wind be effective in the kingdom be effective for our lord god because the word says so is everyone that is born of the spirit Yes, there's no excuse for any of us. None of us can say, I can't do this because we can do it. We have the Lord God Almighty. We have the maker of heaven and earth. We have the one who put the stars up in the sky. We have the one that put the sun to give us a day. We have the one who put the moon there, give us light by night. He's working in us to do of his good will and pleasure. We can do all things. And then I like this, Brother Anthony. The hymnologist put it this way. You are the wind. Beneath my wings. Hallelujah. It's the sweet Holy Spirit that comes in. He illuminates all that Jesus has said. He illuminates all that Jesus has done. He abides in us. He dwells in us to do of the will of the Father in the name of Jesus. We can run like the wind. The apostle Paul put it this way. Don't run in place like you're beating the air. Run this race with patience because we got a whole cloud of witnesses cheering us on. Yes, we got the Lord. He's standing at the finish line waiting. He's come on to me, my child. Oh, yes. We can run like the wind because it's the Lord God who equips us. It's the Lord God 
who strengthens us. It's the Lord God who empowers us to do of his good will and pleasure. We can't take all that he's given us. We can't take all that he's blessed us with and be selfish with it. No, we got to share it with others. When we hear that there's somebody in need, run like the wind. When we hear a sister's in trouble, run like the wind. When we hear of one of our brothers about to do something he has no business doing, run like the wind. Be effective in the kingdom of God. Be swift, it says in the word of God, swift to hear, slow to speak. But we're going to be there for the Lord. Because was he there for us? Oh, yes, he was. Yes, he was. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. To your will and to your way. I got your wind beneath my wings. I put up my sail and you blow that gentle breeze. Yes, I'm sailing on a smooth ocean right now because he's the one that calmed the waters. He's the one that still the sea. He's the one that strengthens me. So I am going to run like the wind. I'm not going to stand before my Lord with an excuse that I couldn't do it. I'm not going to stand before the Lord and have him look at me and say, well, I want to hear, done, well done, my good and faithful servant. I commissioned you, I commanded you, and you ran like the wind. Well done, come on into the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us stand. There might be somebody like Nicodemus that's curious. Somebody out there that's watching us live stream. You might be curious. What about this man that I've heard so much about? The God man. The one that came down from glory. Robed in flesh like a man. Lived and walked this earth for about 30 years came out preaching the gospel to the poor casting out demons opening up blinded eyes unstopped deaf ears healing crooked bones casting out devils so that people can move in the way that the lord wants them to move oh do you know him when he looks at you and says you must be born again have you embraced it Oh, is there someone this morning that says, Lord, yes, Lord, what will you have me to do? Yes. Is there one who's never received Jesus as Lord and Savior, but you're curious because you've watched a loved one, you've watched a deacon, you watched the preacher, you watched the choir singer being used by the Lord in a mighty way. And you had a question, can the Lord use me? That's why the word says, everyone who is born, so is everyone who is born of the spirit. Yes, Lord, yes. Oh, just surrender. Just embrace and let the Lord do a mighty work in you. We can't save ourselves, can we? But if we surrender our all to him, he saves to the uttermost. Lord, yes. Do your will and to your way. I'll say yes. yes. Lord, yes. I will trust you. Trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to, speaks to me With my whole heart I'll agree In my answer mm -hmm. Oh, I'll say 
yes. Oh, I'll say yes. I will trust in your spirit with my whole heart. We gotta run like the wind, amen? Amen, come on, let's thank God for Elder Bruce and letting the Lord and the Holy Spirit use him in a mighty and special way on this morning. It's such an inspiring word. If your hearts and minds are filled with the word of God, please, we ask you to please remain standing. Um, we know that it, it's, what, what time is it, y'all? Or oh, what time is it, y'all? Oh, I'll say it one more time. What time is it, y'all? Time to give. Amen. That means you. Bring, well, that means we come with our tithe and our offering. Where we come and bring unto the Lord our tithe and offering with a smile on our face and joy in our hearts that we have something to give back unto the Lord. What is it that we're giving unto the Lord? The Bible says that God says, "Look, you give me. Uh, I bless you with a hundred percent. You give me back ten. And I'll bless the 90 in such a way that you don't have room enough to receive what I'm, what I'm about to bless you with. And how many have a tither's testimony this morning that tithing works? How many have an offering, te offering testimony that when you give, the Lord shows up again? Amen? Here at First Baptist, we take our tithe and our offering. We put it in our right hand because we want to give God what is and not what is. Because when we give God what is, he'll truly bless what is. Amen. Here are our instructions for our offering and giving at this time. Uh, at, once we pray for our offering, we'll then give the benediction. Sections A and Section C will march around to give their offerings in the temp, uh, at the table, and then we'll exit out the back, uh, the, the side and the back door. Section B will come and then give their offering. Um, as Pastor was saying, the last shall be first. Amen. <laughs> Um, and then give their offering and then exit out the center aisle. We ask that you please uh, not only just run with like the wind with the gospel message, but run like the wind to the voting poll. Amen? Amen. Uh, we can use that in everything, Elder Bruce. Amen. Amen. That we will run today and go and vote. Uh, let us pray. Gracious and most heavenly Father God, we thank you for uh, this offering that it can be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom here in this corner of your vineyard. Father, we pray that you would bless this offering, O oh God, that it might be a blessing to somebody in our community, that it will be a blessing, O oh God, as we would seek out to do the glory of your will, that we will run with the wind to be able missionaries and able ministry to your people, O oh God, that need help. Father, we pray, O oh God, for the preacher this morning. Restore back unto him the virtue that he has been given out, O oh God, and anoint him afresh from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. God, bless each and every one of us that make up this great congregation. Bless this offering, O oh God, as we give it, O oh God, with a cheerful heart, but we give it Oh God, in dedication and service to your goodness and mercy towards us. God, we thank you for your grace and for your mercy. With uplifted hands now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And let all God's children say amen. 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 You may now come from sections A and section B.